a bit late so we go straight to the point. My name is Roberto Procaccini, I'm a journalist, I work for La Conceria, a magazine focused on the leather industry. Today we are with, with uh, Carlo Tremolada, a researcher, specialist and consultant, uh, 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 specialist in uh, welfare animal, and uh, with uh, Sabrina Frontini, director of ECEC, the Institute of Certification of the Leather Quality. Um, Usually, we, we should know that the, um, the, the, the tannery upcycle, upcycle uh, waste of the food industry. So animal welfare, in a, in a way, is uh, far from the core business of a tannery. But nowadays, the market has, new, has a new point of view, has new values. And so for the tanneries, too, it's important to guarantee, to assess, and to monitor their supply chain and the uh, best practice of the supply chain. So we know that uh, ECEC uh, uh, is developing, is setting up uh, a new tool that is not properly a certification, uh, but uh, a risk assessment that uh, allow the tanneries to enhance its supply, su supply chain. Please, Sabrina, can uh, you explain us your scheme? Thank you, Roberto, for your kind introduction. And uh, nice to see you. Today I'm here to, sh to show the contents of this tool of animal welfare that for us is an integration of the traceability tool. And uh, as you know, um, it's more or less uh, seven or eight years that we have this kind of uh, tool of traceability to collect data in our tanneries. And uh, we have a lot of tanneries that uh, are obviously involved uh, in giving information about uh, their suppliers, their supply chain, uh, and uh, to be qualified on sustainability topics. Uh, and one of the main topics today is to give assurance uh, of uh, traceability of raw materials of leather purchased. Even if leather is a byproduct of the meat industry, of the food industry, and this is true for more than 99% of situation, in fact, for bovine, sheep, goats, pig, is right, this sentence, the supply chain shall answer to the request of traceability. And uh, Tannery so tries to find the instruments through which they can guarantee the origin of, the, of their materials. Um, origin means to know the names and places of slaughtering of the animals, names and place of farming of the animals. Um, so it can be done, this kind of work, through our traceability schemes. We have two different schemes of certification, each TS 410 and each TS 412 to do this kind of work. Starting from this kind of data, we can move through different kind of integration. Uh, the first one can be the ethical claim. We recover our hides and skins from the food industry. It's a new standard, ECHTS uh, 733. The second kind of assessment that we can do is related to ladders of South American origin through the DCFL tools, uh, the forestation and conversation free ladder that we developed with uh, NWF, the National Wildlife Federation. And another kind of integration of development is the risk analysis that we are here today to, to present, which is this tool related to animal welfare. We always start from the data collected through traceability schemes. We don't require additional audit because it's a risk analysis that is calcul calculated annually and uh, updated annually after each uh, traceability audit. This analysis is managed by us, by our um, internal staff, uh, with the support of external specialists, for example, with the support of Carlo, which is here today, according to a pre-established uh, mathematical tool. And in a few minutes, we will present it. Thanks to this tool, we are creating a database, a database including all the laws that we can apply 
on animal welfare and all the voluntary protocols uh, that the supply chain apply on this uh, aim. The requirements are specified in the tool and are related uh, to uh, the practices on farming, slaughtering and uh, transport of the animals. We consider law, we consider uh, voluntary certification and uh, through this tool we will have uh, a um, final rating, a score that can be uh, between zero points to 100 points that uh, identifies the risk and opportunities of improvement for the tanneries both globally and also in the different section in the tool we can check uh, through the rating uh, the kind of improvement that are possible it's a tool that is customized because it starts from traceability data so the result uh, is reflects uh, exactly what happens for that supply chain uh, purchasing the leather in that way from that kind of suppliers. And it is a, a strength point of this uh, model. Uh, the results are released for the tannery to drive their decisions. When they purchase uh, leather, they can think about prices, availability, qualities, but they can also add this kind of uh, risk analysis consideration to choose where is better to, to find and to purchase the ladder. We have uh, created this uh, tool and tested it uh, thanks to six pilot tanneries. This model has been uh, recorded because for sure we, we are a little bit uh, aware of the fact that um, we want to, to apply it uh, uh, ex ex exclusively. And today, it's the moment that we are uh, officially spreading this tool and promoting it. It will be um, available for all the tanneries uh, in few in few days, because in March it will be available for all the tanneries. And today, it is it has been created and it is applicable for bovine and goat and sheep leather, not for other species, because the requirements are a little bit specific for this kind of... Uh, uh, animals. Now, I give you the floor, Carlo, which is Thank our you, animal welfare specialist Good that created with us the model. So the floor is yours to explain the, the contents of the tool. So thank you. Uh, as mentioned by Sabrina, now we will talk in more detail about uh, this innovative system that has been developed over the last year by ICEC. And in particular, we are going to see what is it, uh, uh, what are the main elements that compose it, and of course, how it works. So basically, we can start saying that uh, the Animal Welfare Monitoring Tool is an innovative system developed by ICEC for measuring the performance on animal welfare of companies that use cows, sheep, and goat sides in their supply chain. What are the main objectives? Uh, so the main objectives are for, to better managing the risk and the opportunities that are associated with uh, farm animal welfare and to support companies uh, to a decision-making process. Moreover, it is also uh, an effective tool, we can say, for helping for the development of a responsible business strategy and for ensuring transparency with uh, the stakeholders. So uh, now we are going to see how the system com is composed and what do we consider to measure the performance of companies on animal welfare. So basically the system is composed by three uh, main key elements. The first one is the e traceability scheme uh, that represents the starting point for the development of the animal welfare monitoring tool. The second one is the regulatory framework on animal welfare. And in this case, thanks to the traceability, it is possible for each company to trace back to the geographical region where the animal was rotor. And then, of course, it's possible to analyze the regulatory framework on animal welfare of the country that has been identified. And the last element is uh, uh, the animal, are the animal welfare labeling schemes. So again, thanks uh, to the traceability, it is possible for each company to identify uh, the labeling schemes that are uh, implemented or that are associated with uh, a particular slaughterhouse. 
And even in this case, uh, we can then proceed with uh, the analysis of the animal welfare content uh, uh, of the, the labeling schemes. Uh, so basically, uh, now we will go in detail of these two uh, levels that we consider. So about the level one, the level one, as we've seen before, is about the analysis of the regulatory framework. It is composed by one, one single category and four main requirements. Uh, these requirements are about the legal requirement for uh, the protection of animals on the farm, during transportation, and at the time of killing. And uh, the benchmark that we use to evaluate this farm is the European legislation for the protection of farmed animals. And each of these requirements is scored uh, from 0 to 3, depending on uh, the country of origin fully satisfy, or if the country of origin only partially satisfy, or the country of origin doesn't meet the requirement. So about the second level, the second level is about the analysis of the animal welfare label scheme. This section is composed by three main categories. Uh, and each category uh, includes uh, several requirements. Of course, today we don't have enough time uh, to go into deep details of all the requirements. But we can see that the first category is about on how the label schemes uh, compare to the animal welfare local legislation. So basically, it means uh, on how the label schemes compare uh, with the legislation of the country in which it applies. The second uh, category is about the certification process. So uh, we consider all the requirements uh, related to the audit methodology as well as uh, uh, the one related to the transparency of uh, the protocol. And the last two categories are about uh, are focused on animal welfare. And in particular, category number three is about the animal welfare on the farm. So basically, it includes a lot of requirements, for example, related to the space availability, to the door access, uh, uh, to the mutilation, uh, if they are allowed or not, and other requirements. And the last category is about the animal welfare during transportation and at the time of killing. This is also a very important category, and we have requirements uh, in, uh, in it about, for example, the journey time, um, uh, the handling practices, both uh, during transport uh, that uh, in the slaughter, as well as uh, uh, about the standing. So this, if the standing is mandatory or not, uh, we also consider it. And even in this case, uh, the scoring system that we use uh, goes from 0 to 3. Uh, so we use the same approach for both uh, the levels of this tool. So uh, after the two levels have have been scored, then the score is converted uh, uh, into a maximum score of 60 for the level one, so the level about the regulatory framework, and uh, in a maximum score of 40 for the level two. Then uh, the two scores are summed together in order to obtain a maximum score of uh, 100. So basically this means that uh, uh, the animal welfare performances of a company can be measured using a scoring scale that goes from a minimum of zero to a maximum of uh, 100. So here you can see a table that summarizes uh, the scoring system that we used. So about the level one, the level one is composed by one single category and the score goes from zero to 60. The level two is composed by four main categories, and uh, each of them receive a different score according to the importance of the category. But at the end, the sum is uh, 40. What is reported here is uh, a practical example. So uh, for example, here you can see a company that uh, is sourcing in level one from three different countries. So country one, country two, and country three. Uh, you can see in the white row the score that each country is uh, receiving based on uh, its uh, legislation. And what we consider and what really makes this system uh, really innovative is that is uh, the purchase volume. So uh, basically the final score is not only given by the country a company is sourcing by, but it is also weighted according to the purchased volume. So as you can see, uh, the final score of the level one would be 12 
uh, because it's sourcing the 20% from a country that is reaching a 60 point, and the country for the score for country two is about 20, and the score for country three is about five. So the final score for the level one is uh, 37 on 60. And uh, about the level two, we adopt the same approach. So basically, uh, in this case, the free animal welfare standard have been identified. Each of them has been scored, uh, as you can see. And uh, even in, uh, in this case, we consider the purchase volume. So basically, the final score for this level two is about 27 on 30. What is important to say is that uh, the level one is uh, always present, but uh, the level two um, can be present or not based on uh, the fact if we found uh, if we find the um, the animal welfare label scheme in the supply chain or not, and also if. Uh, uh, the information contained uh, in the animal welfare label scheme that have been identified are available or not. So basically, we don't consider uh, the, the standard that are not public available or if the information are private. So at the end, uh, this uh, company is reaching a final score of 64 on 100. Uh, that is given by the sum of the level one, that is a 37 point, uh, and uh, the sum of le with uh, level two, that is a 27 point on 30. And uh, of course, uh, um, this uh, system uh, really provides uh, cl clear results that are uh, very easy to read, and uh, also they uh, can underline if there are some areas of uh, improvement in a very easy way. And uh, yes, thank you. Okay, Sabrina, just to be clear, am, am I right if I say that the tool is both um, a tool for the tannery to enhance its practices and uh, a valuable information to communicate to brands and uh, customers? Um, it depends on the tannery because we release uh, these results to the tannery as a risk assessment and they are free if they want to share the result with uh, their um, clients or not. Because sometimes if the um, final score is not so high, probably they want to work, they want to improve and only at the end of this process they would like to share the results. Uh, so um, it's a self-assessment uh, released to tanneries and uh, um, they can decide if they want to share or not uh, the, the contents with their clients. Okay, thank you. And Carlo, we say that the, um, uh, the assessment is not a judgment, is not a degree, is an information for the, for the tanneries. Yes, basically it's a measurement um, in order to monitor what is the situation of, uh, of a company. But of course we didn't set uh, levels uh, or something like that uh, because uh, at this moment is not the aim of uh, this project. So what we want to do is to um, um, collect as much more information as possible in uh, the supply chain in order to really have a, a big database with all this information. And then we can think in a second moment to uh, fix um, maybe some levels or something like that. Okay. Um, there's any question from the audience? Maybe one? Thank you. My question is, the assessment that is made, a part of that is itself declaratory, paper-based, or does the assessment assessment happens in a in a remote manner? I don't know. So can you repeat? It? Uh, I don't. Yeah, the assessment that you yeah. make is it self-declaratory? The the companies provide you with information, paper-based information, uh, or is it part that? you have access to databases that contain that information? Yeah, basically the, the assessment is based on the e-check traceability. 
Uh, so is uh, uh, related to the the system that is implemented by I don't remember the year, but uh, uh, is implemented on uh, traceability. So all the information are collected through uh, the eCheck traceability system, and uh, thanks to this, we are also able to uh, identify what are the protocols that are associated with a slaughterhouse uh, and uh, also the volume. So everything is based uh, on the each traceability. Uh, so it's a really key element for, for the development of uh, this tool. It's near the work we did with DCFL uh, instruments because we start always collecting the data through traceability. They are always documented the information and verified through our protocols and then analyzing uh, that data we develop the risk analysis. Okay, thank you all. I think that is enough. Thank you. Thank you for to being all of here. you. <laughs> Enjoy the fair. Come on!